Okay, welcome back. So for 12-6, we are going to be measuring objects, and we just watched the video on how to measure. And then we're going to be taking that data, that information, and using it to make line plots. And a line plot is just a way to organize data so we can understand what we have and then even make some um, inferences or answer some questions using that data. So in order to make a line plot, it's just like making a number line, and oftentimes it's going to be greater than one. So looking at my data here, I see I have whole numbers and fractions. So it's going to be numbers that look like one's my smallest, all the way up to two and a quarter. So in order to make these, I need to draw a number line. Here's one been drawing. One has been drawn for you here. Sometimes you'll draw your own. And then I need to put a tick mark at the beginning and the um, at the beginning and one at the end. So I'm going to put one here and one here. I'm not going to label them right now because I don't know what they'll be labeled yet, just yet. So determine the largest and the smaller num smallest numbers in your data. So I'm looking here and I see I've got one is the smallest and two and a fourth is my largest. So now I want to label the first tick mark the smallest whole number. So in this case, it is one. If this were my smallest data point, I'd want one whole. So I always want to start and end at a whole. So I'm going to put one right here. And now I want to look at um, my largest number. I'm going to label the tick mark the largest whole number that fits my data. So this is two and a fourth, so two wouldn't fit because this is more than two. So I'm going to bounce up to three. So my number line is going to be between one and three. So here was an example if we need it. If my smallest data point is two and one fourth, I'm going to label the first tick mark with a two because it's a little bit less than that. Um, and your number line should start and end with a whole number, which it does. Now we need to fill in any whole numbers on our number line. And remember, we must have equal size pieces. So between one and three, there's only one whole number missing, and that would go right in the middle. One, two, three. Now, I need to partition each whole into equal size pieces, depending on my data. So I'm either going to do halves or fourths. So looking at my data, all of our, num all of our fractions are fourths, so I'm going to partition it into fourths. And that's for each whole. And I always make a half and then cut each half in half. And now I need to label those. So this is one, one and one fourth, one and two fourths, one and three fourths, two, two and one fourth, two and two fourths, two and three fourths, three. All right, so let's just recap what I did. I labeled my number line with two tick marks. I found my largest number and my smallest number. My smallest number was already a whole number, so I could use that whole number. My largest number was two and one fourth, so I bumped it up to the next full number, which was three. After that, I figured out what my whole numbers were missing, and I filled in just that one number that was missing. Then I partitioned my number line based on my fractions, and in this case, it was fourths. So I put all of my fourths in there. At this time, you might need to pause to catch up, and that's totally fine. Now that I have my tick marks all filled in and labeled, my next step is to record the data with a little dot or an X above those hash marks, and I like to go in order. So one and two-fourths would be right here. Two and one-fourth. One whole. One and two-fourths and one and three-fourths. So now I have my data on my number line. And now it's clear to see which one had the most number of data points right here. I know my smallest data points one. I can easily see that two and one-fourth is my largest. So what we're going to be doing for this topic is we'll be measuring some things to come up with some data, and then we'll be putting our data on line plots. In order to be successful at this, we want to make sure we're being nice and neat. You can even use your ruler to help you draw a nice straight number line to make our line plot on. Um, that is it for this video. Please remember to fold your paper in half and then cut it and glue it in your notebook. Give a couple problems a try, and if you need some more help, you can sign up with 
for a mini lesson with your teacher. Thanks for watching Topic 12.6, Making Line Plots, Part 1 and Part 2, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.